Intraoperative floppy iris syndrome is a condition that can increase the risk of complications during cataract surgery five-fold, and it used to be mostly associated with men who are taking a certain class of medications, one in particular, to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia. But it's not just a concern for men anymore, because these medications are also used to treat urinary retention in women, and can also be used to treat, in more rare cases, high blood pressure, passing kidney stones, and prostatitis. But the crazy thing is that this condition may happen even after just one single dose of this medication. More on what medications are responsible and what you and your surgeon can do to prepare for the cataract surgery to lower the risk of sight-threatening complications. Let's talk about what this floppy iris syndrome means and why it can be a problem. It's characterized by three main things that happen during cataract surgery, which is that the iris constricts despite using dilating eye drops, the iris flutters and billows, and it has a tendency to prolapse or move forward towards the incisions that are used for the cataract surgery. This undesired movement of the iris and poor visibility of the lens due to the pupil constriction can lead to complications during the cataract surgery. One of them being iris damage. Because of the iris's movement and prolapsing and possibly getting in the way of the instruments, it can be damaged. And the iris is really helpful in blocking light coming into the eye. So having damage to that iris can lead to light sensitivity and issues with glare, as well as chronic inflammation in some cases. Because of the reduced visibility, it's possible that the posterior capsule may be torn. This capsule is what holds our natural lens in place and will hold the intraocular lens in place after the surgery. If this capsule is torn, it's possible for the lens to fall into the back of the eye, which can lead to further complications, potentially retinal issues, and the vitreous gel that fills the back of the eye can potentially prolapse through this tear, leading to further issues. I do want to point out that cataract surgery is one of the most successful surgeries that exist, not in just eye care alone, but in all surgeries, in terms of its usually low risk of complications and high success rates. So it's important to keep those risks as low as we can, and that's why I made this video. You might be wondering what on earth the prostate and prostate medications have to do with the iris and cataract surgery, but it turns out that there's a pretty clear connection with what happens to the target organ, which would be the prostate and the bladder in this case, and what happens to the iris muscle. To make a fairly complex process fairly brief, the body functions based on signals. There are chemical messengers that go from one place to another and they latch onto receptors and tell cells and organs to act in a certain way. Well, let's focus on the main culprit here, which is tamsulosin. The main problem in BPH is that the prostate blocks the urethra, not allowing the urine to pass easily through, and it has some effects on the bladder as well. The goal here is to relax the muscles around the bladder and prostate in order to assist with urination. Tamsulosin helps these muscles to relax by blocking receptors that usually receive signals telling these muscles to contract. So blocking these receptors relaxes those muscles. The problem is we think that similar receptors are in the dilator muscle in the iris. So when these receptors are blocked, the iris doesn't dilate. The problem is tamsulosin is extremely selective and irreversible, so it really, really attaches to those receptors. This is why we think that even a history of just a single dose of this medication could lead to intraoperative floppy iris syndrome. Since this medication is taken systemically, it goes all throughout the body. It does reach the target organ and work quite well, but it also goes elsewhere, and that could include the iris. There are other medications in the same class as tamsulosin, and others in entire 
other categories of medication that have been associated with floppy iris syndrome, but they are much less likely to cause it. So more on those a little later. So if you've taken tamsulosin or another medication that's been associated with floppy iris, how do you know if it's going to be a problem for you during cataract surgery? Well, there's no perfect way to know, but one of the signs is that the eye just doesn't dilate well during any eye exam you've had prior to the cataract surgery. But knowing your history is going to be really important because there are things that the cataract surgeon can do in order to prepare for this to mitigate risks, and I'll be talking about those in a moment. First, let's talk about what you can do if you're a patient. Well, first of all, if you are on the cusp of starting one of these medications for a prostate issue or urinary retention or otherwise, it's important to realize that there is a risk here. So it's very important to discuss with your ophthalmologist, your family practice doctor, your OBGYN, your urologist, whoever's involved in your care, uh, they can get connected with each other and determine a plan for you. Perhaps it's not an emergent issue and it can be put on hold if cataract surgery is in the really near future. Since other medications in the same class as tamsulosin are much less likely to cause floppy iris syndrome, they could be considered as alternatives. The issue here is the same thing that makes them less problematic for the iris also can cause side effects. Because tamsulosin is so selective in binding this one particular receptor, it is less likely to cause postural hypotension, which is one of those things where you stand up and you get a little faint, a little dizzy, something that can be very dangerous, especially for an elderly person. The other medications in its class aren't that selective, so they act on other areas that you don't necessarily want, and the side effect of that is this postural hypotension. So that's really something to think about the risk versus benefit here. So what do you do if you've taken this medication in the past but have discontinued it since then? Well, you still could be at risk for a floppy iris during cataract surgery, and it's important to let your doctor know. It might be hard to remember because perhaps there was just an issue way back when, and there might have just been a single dose. So. If you are preparing for cataract surgery, it's really important to look back through your medical history and your history of medications, um, speak with your other providers to check to see if you've ever had a history of taking tamsulosin so they can prepare the surgery accordingly. And what do you do if you're currently taking this medication and what should you look out for? Well, the good thing is that a floppy iris doesn't cause problems in the day-to-day. -day. It's really only an issue during surgery and that's why we call it intraoperative floppy iris syndrome. But as I've been saying, it's really important to share this medical history with your surgeon and they will very likely ask you this as well and they will come up with a surgical plan that they could potentially discuss with you. Although that plan always has the potential to change during surgery, based on what happens. So let's talk about some of these things a surgeon can do in order to mitigate some of these risks of complications that can happen due to a floppy iris. It was thought that discontinuing the medication well in advance of cataract surgery may help reduce the risk of floppy iris syndrome, but as I've been discussing, even a single dose can be problematic and lead to the syndrome, so that is not really recommended. And there's also been an idea to dilate the eye multiple times a day for a week leading up to the surgery, but that has shown limited success. They're much more likely to reduce risks of floppy iris syndrome complications with adjustments made during the cataract surgery, so let's talk about those. There are a few things that can be done during surgery to try to maintain control of this unruly iris, and one of those is with the use of viscoelastic. Viscoelastic is routinely used in cataract surgery, but there are different kinds with different consistencies, and sometimes they can be used in combination 
in order to reduce the ability of the iris to move around during the surgery. There's also an option to inject medication such as epinephrine or phenylephrine in order to dilate the pupil and maintain the iris tone. There are also iris hooks, iris retractors, and pupil expansion rings that help to mechanically hold the iris open to keep a good view of the cataract throughout the surgery. There's also a dye that can be used in order to dye the capsule to make it more easy to see. So that way, if the iris is closing and there's not as much light getting into the eye, making it difficult to visualize the different structures, this dye will help make them more visible and reduce the likelihood to a tear of that posterior capsule that we were talking about earlier. These methods can be used alone or in combination to help reduce the risks that can occur in this floppy iris syndrome. There are always things to consider, such as the medications being injected into the eye during surgery, potentially causing irritation or side effects. There's also the risk of these iris hooks or pupil expansion rings to cause damage to the iris, which can lead to light sensitivity and glare. But again, not having that iris in place, you also run the risk of the iris becoming damaged and causing those same symptoms lifelong. And this is a much more controlled situation. Your surgeon will know best what they are comfortable with, what they've been most successful with, and how they feel about your particular case regarding how dense the cataract is and how well the iris dilates to begin with among other factors. And they will work up a surgical plan which again may change as the surgery progresses. I think this really highlights how important it is to tell your surgeon ahead of time if you have a history of these medications because if they know that to be the case, they can prepare well ahead of time with a plan and try to reduce those risks of complications. As I mentioned, this does not just affect men with BPH because tamsulosin can also be prescribed to treat prostatitis kidney stones, hypertension, and urinary retention in women. Tamsulosin is an alpha-1 antagonist, and there are other medications in its class that have also been connected to intraoperative floppy iris syndrome. However, their likelihood of causing this is much lower. Those would be alfuzacin, doxazacin, prazacin, and terazacin. Though these medications have sometimes been taken by those who experience floppy iris syndrome, the incidence is much more rare than for tamsulosin, likely because they do not bind as selectively or irreversibly to those receptors I was talking about earlier. Solotocin and natopidil are newer medications that are pharmacologically similar to tamsulosin. So it will be really important to have studies in the future to determine what their effect on the iris is and definitely something for patients with cataract surgery in their future, as well as providers to keep on their radar. There are a lot of other medications that have a similar effect on the iris and show some intraoperative floppy iris syndrome manifestations, but their mechanism of action or why it happens isn't very well understood, and they're in different classes than these other medications that we've been focusing on so far. That would include saw palmetto, which is a more natural BPH remedy. Other medications that have been associated with intraoperative floppy iris syndrome include a class of medications for high blood pressure called angiotensin II receptor inhibitors, as well as medications to treat anxiety, dementia, restless leg syndrome, and antipsychotics. I'm going to put a list in the description, but keep in mind, this is not an exhaustive list and the risks of these medications causing floppy iris syndrome is much lower than that for tamsulosin. It's worth noting that intraoperative floppy iris syndrome was only demonstrated in systemic alpha-1 antagonists. No cases were observed with bunazacin, which is a topical alpha-1 antagonist. For more information about cataract surgery, check out this playlist here, and I think you'll like this video here. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.